Welcome back to Grade 7 Math. We are now looking at Chapter uh, 4.3, which is on Table of Values. And Table of Values is basically a way of organizing your data uh, in a chart um, so that you're able to kind of look at patterns uh, when you're given a drawing or when you're given a word problem. Um, in, this in this case, we're looking at drawings, and we're going to convert all the information from the data uh, from the from the drawing into a data table or table of values. So the the golden rule with algebra when you're given a graphical problem, so uh, that means pictures, is to convert it into a table of values. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here at this set of three figures. So I have figure one, figure two, figure three. And basically what this means is figure one has four toothpicks or four sticks um, that make a diamond pattern. And then figure two uh, means that I've now extended this pattern um, and I use more um, toothpicks to, to create this pattern. And then figure three uh, continues on as well. So we can look at a couple of things. Uh, the thing that we always have control over, which is the independent variable. So we, our independent variable is the figure number. It will always be the figure number when we're given a graphical representation um, because we want to see the relationship between the figure number and the actual things that we're looking at. Actually, it won't always be that. If we wanted to look at, for example, the relationship between the number of squares and the number of toothpicks, then I wouldn't necessarily use um, the figure number depending on the actual items that are found in the problem. But when in doubt uh, and you're not given much else, then you can use the figure number. In this case, I'm going to be looking at the number of toothpicks that are used to create these patterns. If I actually looked at the number of squares, um, one square in figure one, two squares in figure two, three squares in figure three, it's a pretty easy pattern. Um, so now that we're given these two variables, so figure number is a variable because we get to choose the variable, and what changes because of it is the number of toothpicks. The higher the figure number, the more number of toothpicks I would need. Because this depends on the other variable, this is called the dependent variable. So let's start filling out our figure numbers. So figure one, figure two, figure three. And let's look at the number of toothpicks required to build that particular figure. Figure one needs four toothpicks. Figure two needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven toothpicks. And figure three needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten toothpicks. So I have these numbers of toothpicks. It's very important that we count properly so that all of our numbers in the, in the table of values um, are correct. So then what we could do with this information is we could start to look now at our numbers and try to find any patterns. For our, um, for our term numbers, our term numbers are, will always have an easy pattern because it'll always be plus one. Well, most of them have plus one. And if it's not plus one, I might have to make some adjustments to that so that it is a plus one plus one pattern, which is basically start at one and add one each time or a counting pattern. The one the variable that has a little bit more variety is our dependent variable. So we start at 4 and goes to 7, it goes to 10. I can look at some gaps. Maybe it's a multiplication. Maybe it's an addition one. In this case, if I look at the gaps between the two, I can see that it's always adding 3, plus 3 and then plus 3. So the gap stays the same. So when the gap stays the same, that means I can predict that the gap for the next one will be plus 3 and the last one will be plus 3 as well. So which means that my figures 4 and 5 will have 13 and 16 toothpicks respectively. Now from this information we can look at what we call the down rule. The down rule is the rule uh, that shows the pattern. So the down rule for the number of toothpicks, so we would put the number of toothpicks equals start at Four. So we're starting at 4, and then with each successive figure number, we will add 3. And then start at 4, then add 3 toothpicks each time. So the total number of toothpicks equals start at 4, and then add 3 each time. So depending on the figure number, I'll have to add 3 several more times to get to that final answer. Now there's another rule that we're looking at and that's called the across rule. Across rule is a little bit more tricky, but it uses the same table of values. So I have figure number and I have number of toothpicks. And it's the same information. So I'm just recopying the table from above. 
And now what I want to do is I want to see the relationship between the figure number and the number of toothpicks instead. I want to see how do I get from the number 1 to the number 4, the number 2 to the number 7. How is 3 related to 10? How is 4 related to 13? And how is 5 related to 16? The easiest way to look at this is by looking at it in two ways. The first rule is use the down rule to give the multiplication part of the across rule. So in this case, so in this case, for example, the down rule is, so if we looked back above, our down rule is plus 3. So in this case, it's plus 3. Then what we're going to do is we try for figure 1. So the total number of toothpicks is equal to term number or figure number times 3. So this number here becomes a multiplication. Be the reason why it becomes multiplication is because it goes up by 3 each time. And if it goes up by 3 for, for the fifth figure, that means it's gone up by 3 five times. So that's why we see 5 times 3. So let's try that out. For the first figure, first figure times 3, 1 times 3. Well, 1 times 3, does that give a total of 4 toothpicks? Well, it doesn't because I'm actually short one toothpick. This means I need to add one extra toothpick to get to the fourth toothpick. So that means we now need to add or subtract and fix the answer. So we need to fix the answer with an addition or subtraction. So in this case, I have 1 times 3 because at times th the, the 3 comes from the down rule. So this 3 is part of the down rule. But 1 times 3 is not equal to 4. In order to fix, I need to add that 1. So now I need to add 1. So this part is called the fix. Later on, we'll call that the constant because constant means we always constant. We have to constantly fix our answer to get to the right um, to get to the right answer that we want. So let's take a look to see if this works. Does the number of toothpicks equals term number times three plus one? Well, let's look for each one of these um, each one of these across rules across uh, each of these figure numbers and see is two times three plus one equal to seven. Well, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is equal to 7. 3 times 3 plus 1 is 10. 4 times 3 plus 1 is 13. And 5 times 3 plus 1 is 16. So here are my two... So here is the across rule again. Number of toothpicks is equal to term number times 3. The 3 comes from the down rule. Then I need to fix, I need to add the plus 1 or subtract, depending on the numbers, to get the correct answer in the total number of toothpicks. So my rules are across rule number of toothpicks equals term number times 3 plus 1, or term value equals term number times 3 plus 1, depending on what our dependent variable is. Our other rule is the down rule. So starting with the number in the first figure, 4, and we knew we add 3 each time, it's number of toothpicks equals start at 4 and add 3 each time. So here are the two different rules, the down rule and the across rule. What we'll be doing is we'll be looking at a couple of the examples in the textbook. So you can start looking at these examples um, in the textbook. And then what we'll do is we'll continue looking at these in class. We'll correct some of them. We'll review this again in class, but hopefully uh, you're able to